For all those who could not attend, thank you. There are a whole <laughs> bunch of folk that need to be thanked. In no particular order, party. The man said it all. Next, the Carr family. Yes, yes. Okay, wait a minute. Ex-wife Goldie. Sisters Ruth Cox, Peggy Dodd, Katie Peterson, Juanita Rush. You know, I can wear hearing aids. I don't mind that. Lose my hair. I don't mind that. Ah, I got one in every pair of, every house, room in the house. Nancy Schultz, Louis, Lucille Schiefer, Seifert, Seifert. Yeah. <laughs> Edith Wilson and Tracy Wood, and all the sons yeah. and all the daughters and all the grandchildren, for their, like Gordon, like I said, for their sacrifice, dedication, time and work. And for, for the car memorial. It's a neat thing, ain't it? I don't know who else to say, but Jeffrey, well done. And all of you. Mm -hmm. Story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Story time. Okay. After a change of command, I packed up my Jeep and drove west. I said, I'll stop through. So I got in touch with a really nice lady, and I said, hey, I'm going to come through. It should be about this day. And I stopped about 10 miles out at the uh, nearest whatever Motel 8, and I got up the next morning, and I said, nah, come on, Ned. So I put on some whites, and I drove up to the Katy Museum. There are a lot of folks that will, will understand this, I hope. You, you have done things that you feel proud of. Other folks may not know how you feel, and, and that's okay. It's you did something that you feel proud of, and seldom... Do other folks do something to you or for you that makes you feel proud? At least I was selfish that way. I drove up and God Almighty. Yeah. I mean, the VFW, the American Legion, the band, the high school, half the town, the mayor, where do you go to? The mayor, all these folks, and all seven of the Carr sisters were there to greet me. Unbelievable. So the people of Dakota got a special place in my heart. Well, March did a lot of work. So many others did too. Katie Museum. They need to be appreciated and thanked. The Chamber of Commerce. My, my dear friend, Emmy Scott Stidham. <laughs> Her best friend, Betty. Mm -hmm. Is Betty here today? She was here yesterday. Here, here. And Jerry. Mm -hmm. Old, new Jerry. Mm -hmm. And there's also an old Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> and Jean. Dakota, they need help. You need to get this thing open. And you need to keep it open and show people what it's all about. Because it's a story. Calf, what? Calf wrestling. Calf wrestling, what is it? Here. Yeah. <laughs> Capital of the world. I'm not going down that road. <laughs> See, I told you to be quick. I'd like to thank the Creek Nash Nation Color Guard and Kinley. Kinley, well done. A cappella. Mm -hmm. Miss Figgins, tell your husband thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well done, Myron. Thank you. To the Sammy B. Roberts, DE 413, that family of people, of 244 crew, including, I was honored to meet these people Dudley Moreland, Rick Felt, Vince Goodrich, Tom Stevenson, Jack Hewson, Dick Rohde, Bud Comet, and I did not meet Paul in your car, but I felt him. 
every day. Those, those other guys showed up at Charleston one time and the 413 was having a reunion. Actually, it was a bigger reunion. It was the Taffy 3 reunion. Mm. And Taffy 3 was the carriers and all the escorts. My uncle was on the Gambier Bay. Where's Duncan? Dunk? Where's Duncan? FC2. All right. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> My uncle was a fire controlman for a brand new thing called a fire control radar on the back end of the Gambier Bay to shoot down the Japanese planes that were trying to sneak aboard. Mm -hmm. uh, he saw a couple of the plumes. Gambier Bay got sunk. They ain't found her yet. Mm -hmm. And he was in the water for a couple of days and uh, my uncle had a wonderful life, moved on, and uh, he never talked about it. All right. For the USS Carr family, for us, all of us, and the wives and the sweethearts and the children and the grandchildren and the parents. Guard has already said it. Family, courage, will, determination. determination. Some of you may remember that I often said one should have fun doing what one does. I always try to have fun at least once a day. The engineers hated it. I think the phone talkers would get on, you know, people would say, Bagley just walked on the bridge, watch out, man control, here it comes. And nobody over here, nobody over there. Start second gas terminal, I'll have fun. It was fun. If that didn't work, I made the gunner's mate. Where are you? Where's Gunner? Gunner first. I made him break out the M14. And I'd shoot up a bunch of rounds, and he'd say, "How do I? How do I account for that in expenditure?" And I said, "Well, frame wreck." <laughs> anyway, when I reported aboard, I said, "We got to before I reported aboard. I said, I got to have something, something to go by." So. As many of you have, I haven't changed the oil in it yet. How about that? Huh? Woo! SM2, front and center. SM2, front and center. How many of you remember this? No, oh, down there. Please. You can't get up here. How many of you remember that? Uh, SM2 and the guys would rig it up so that when we did our breakaways, thank you, when they did our breakaways, it took a long time to find the right one, but I found the William Tell Overture, you know, the, 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 you know the song, and it's Hi-Ho Silver Away, and we'd pull away and the lines would go away. And, it was fun. And then it got a little bit out of hand. And they started taking pictures. And then Tonto showed up. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to ring a bell for my Tonto. So, got to have fun at least once a day. <laughs> Almost done. Funny story. We did a line swing for drug ops, and we went to the Caribbean, and then we went over the Pacific, and then we went to the Caribbean. We had a swim call in the Pacific. XO was going berserk. We had a gunner up on the bridge wing. The motor whaleboat was patrolling, you know. And then finally, I looked at him and said, XO, take it easy. There's some dolphin right over there. He said, where? I said, I don't know. I just saw some. Sharks run away from dolphins. We got, a, we got a swim call in the Caribbean, and we were pulling up cocaine like you wouldn't believe. I'm not talking about little packets like you see on television. And I don't mean pounds. We were pulling in tons of cocaine. TM1 can't remember. He was never in there. We wouldn't trust him with the key, but we kept the cocaine <laughs> in the torpedo locker, I mean, uh, magazine. And he said, I need to take temps. I said, no, you don't. We'll do that with somebody else. <laughs> 
We had so much cocaine, XO and I sat there and figured it out one night. We said, okay, street value. No, we can't get street value for it. We'll take half of it. <laughs> we were going to do a refueling as scheduled. We were going to turn off all the radios. We were going to head around to Argentina or Brazil, sell the cocaine, <laughs> sell everything on the ship we could, take it out and scuttle it so nobody could get the good stuff. And then come back in. Every member in the crew would have the stars not here. I think it was something like five million dollars per crew. And, and naturally, the XO and I had a contingency fund of about fifteen or twenty each. <laughs> Somehow, some way, I said something about it to somebody who said something who said something. You know, we get back up to Charleston. Moore, shift colors. Commodore walks aboard and says. That's not funny about the cocaine. <laughs> I thought it was. Uh, how many of you know last year, just about day before yesterday, they found USS Sammy B. Roberts? Wow. All right, they found her. Some salvage company or something. It's, if you want to look it up, it's in CNN Travel. Their pictures are also on the wiki page for Sammy B. Roberts. The pictures are amazing. Now, the, the hand drawing shows what appears to be the port side blown off. I'm sorry, car family, bear with me. The port side blown off matches where the mount captain would be. The painting shows the starboard side blown off right above the hand drawing. And the picture from the deep submergence thing, I think, shows the starboard side blown off of Mount 52. There it is, black and white. I mean, it's in blue. Everybody can see it. It's neat. It's, it's heartbreaking. But it's real. You need to take a look at it. It was found in uh, deepest deepest recovery ever, much deeper than Titanic. I say a prayer for those five people and their families. Mm -hmm. uh, they have not found, no, they have found Johnston, the DD that was sunk. They have not found Hoel, and they have not found Gambier Bay. Story. The, the, the survivors were there with me. We were in the hangar bay of the aircraft carrier in Charleston. What's that, Lexington or something? Yeah. And it was Taffy 3, and I'm standing there, sitting there, and I, they were on board car, and I was so proud. The crew was proud to have them, and it was so neat, and I thought car was the greatest thing since sliced bread, and he is. But nonetheless, these people are looking at me like, and I hadn't figured it out. We got over there to the hangar and we started eating supper and these people were talking about the stories of that day and it suddenly dawned on me. We deserve to love Paul Henry Carr. But all those people are heroes. We're here. All of them. The greatest generation. Uh, 224, 224 crew, 89 were killed. Captain Copeland hero fought like a battleship all those stories this is a good story in CNN travel I'm skipping it I'm skipping it I'm skipping it and the, there is a federal law that says you can't mess with it you know so Tom McInerney can't go down and steal stuff uh, there's something between 17 and 24 sailors involved in the Ammo in the ammo magazine in the upper handling room and the gun mount in a five inch 38 single mount. The nominal rate of fire seven rounds per minute. Now, this is manual seven rounds a minute. Now, I can't find the exact size of the magazine, I think I have, but I'm not sure. And I I got conflicting stories about what time the CO, Lieutenant Commander Copeland, said, right forward, right on, let's go get them, or whatever he said. But it's something like about 
35 minutes worth of time to shoot. That's all the time they had from the time they turned to start firing. And when it was sunk, about 35 minutes, and they shot something like about 245 rounds. Do the math. That's a hell of a lot more than seven rounds per minute. Okay. USS Carr. Sammy B. Roberts. Family. Courage, will, determination. I want to plant a seed. I want all of us here to think about this. We're going to hear tonight from XO Brown, Captain Brown, I think, I hope, a little bit about the FFGX. It's a chance. And if we don't try for it, it ain't going to happen. Somebody tried, talked to the right people, and got Copeland, Carr, and Sammy B in the FFG7 class. It's hard to do. It takes a lot of political capital, money, time, effort. But if we start now, we can have another car. Yeah. Think about it. Thank you all for having me. Thank you. Let's have fun.